final update for Monster Hunter World Iceborne is soon upon us. With the recent developer diary revealed, we have a lot of new content to look forward to. Even if it may be the final update, it looks like we're getting some really solid changes and additions. In this video, I want to cover one of the more prominent additions in this update, Clutch Claw Boost. Quick disclaimer before we begin, since this video is being made before the update, all of what I say might become obsolete. However, the developer diary has given us enough details that I believe they're set in stone. For those that don't know how the Clutch Claw works, the Clutch Claw is an attack added onto the Slinger. While aiming your Slinger, press Circle for PS4 or B for Xbox to fire the Claw. If the Claw connects into a monster, it will latch onto that specific part. From there, you can either Slinger Burst, Claw Attack, or Weapon Attack. For the sake of this video, I will only explain the Weapon Attack. All other actions can be found through other sources or in the Hunter's Notes. By using a Weapon Attack, you'll work to soften the monster's hide. Softening the monster's hide increases the hit zone values, dealing more damage as a result. This also helps prevent bouncing in some cases and works with weakness exploit. Attacking a tenderized monster from a weakness exploit 3 is about 50 extra affinity. However, there are a few extra steps when it comes to tenderizing a monster's hide. Even after launching onto the monster and ensuring you're safe, your weapon dictates what happens next. Each weapon is categorized as either being a light weapon or a heavy weapon. For light weapons such as sword and shield, dual blades, and long sword, it takes two weapon attacks to tenderize a monster's hide, but as compensation, you're given slinger ammo to use. For heavy weapons such as greatsword, hammer, and hunting horn, it takes a single attack while clutch clawed to tenderize the monster's hide, though as a result you get no slinger ammo from this. This makes the Clutch Claw rather annoying for some weapons. Heavy weapons that could utilize Slinger Ammo or Star for it except from the field, and light weapons that need to Clutch Claw multiple times would have to take risks. Clutch Claw Boost fixes this by giving all weapons both light and heavy properties. So light weapons take only one tenderize attack, and heavy weapons give you Slinger Ammo. Depending on the weapon, this could be worth investing into if you have the space. Because of how this affects every weapon, I want to study how useful it could be. Though before we begin, I should probably mention the elephant in the room. Clutch Claw Boost is a level 3 decoration, meaning you need to sacrifice a level 3 deco slot or higher. Depending on your weapon, playstyle, and current decoration loadout, fitting this in will be up to you. As such, I'll merely be focusing on what happens if you have the space for Clutch Claw Boost. This does mean if there is a much stronger skill to use, I will recommend it instead. Lastly, I will be giving each weapon a star rating based on its effectiveness. A 1 star means a minor improvement. 2 stars mean quality of life improvement. And 3 stars mean a game changer. With everything out of the way, let's start from the top of the weapon list with Greatsword. Greatsword, Heavy Weapon. Greatsword is one of the best weapons to use with Clutch Claw Boost. The True Charge Slash, one of the Greatsword's best attacks, can be cancelled into from a Slinger Burst. So instead of needing to go through the Charge and Tackle motions, you can instead Charge, Slinger Burst, True Charge Slash. Since the ammo you get from a monster has the ability to flinch them, you can also make some solid openings with this. I should mention that even though earplugs would take priority, the option of level 4 earplug decorations helps. For this reason, Greatsword gets 3 stars. Even if you might avoid using the Slinger Burst as you're more of a hit and run player, the Slinger ammo alone helps for flinching, stuns, or flinch shot wall bangs, something that Dung Pods won't exactly help you with. Sword and Shield, Light Weapon. You'd think that a weapon that takes two Clutch Claws to tenderize would benefit from Clutch Claw Boost, though Sword and Shield already has an instant tenderizing mechanic built in. Upon pressing the slinger button after any roll, you'll do an uppercut with your claw. If you press the weapon attack of the button through this method, the part will instantly be tenderized. You'll even get slinger ammo as usual as if you tenderize normally. I know this method of tenderizing the monster is rather difficult to aim however. For this reason, Clutch Claw Boost gets 1 star, uh, give or take 2. Let's just say 1.5 for the sake of making things easy. 
It's a minor improvement if you use the Doctor on a Clutch Claw, and a quality of life if not. Long Sword, Light Weapon. Long Sword and Clutch Claw boost would be very effective with each other. Being a light weapon, the need to tenderize twice can get a little annoying, especially in order to keep weakness exploit up. I am aware that this update also works to cause tenderized monster parts to become tenderized for longer. However, it doesn't exactly change the need to tenderize twice being rather annoying. Also, we don't know how long the monster part will stay tenderized via this update. Making it only one tenderize before the part is softened will help immensely for sure. For this reason, it will be three stars, likely two and a half for other playstyles. It can definitely be a game changer for some, but I'm sure most are fine without it. Dual Blades Light Weapon Similar to Sword and Shield, Dual Blades already have an instant tenderizing mechanic. While in Demon Mode, you'll perform the double round slash and then press the Clutch Call button, after which you can instantly tenderize the monster part so long as you press it at the beginning. However, this is a lot more tricky to use thanks to the animation commitment. This in turn makes the Clutch Call boost more for quality of life for Dual Blades. In fact, it's even more of a quality of life compared to Sword and Shield. As such, it gets two stars, without the fancy half stars. I know a few who would prefer to just tenderize normally without having to take the risk of the double round slash. I even have moments of just wanting to tenderize well using this move. Hammer, heavy weapon. As the hammer already tenderizes in one hit, the added benefit of slinger ammo isn't that effective. It is true the hammer is able to sling your burst while charging, but this is only really used to force an opening, which you can already do with enough bonks to the head for the monster. If you can relatively get thorn pots from the monster, I would say clutch claw boost could work, especially thanks to the clutch claw attack after certain hammer swings. Though if you have to gamble on the type of ammo you get from a tenorize, it isn't exactly worth it in my opinion. For this reason, hammer gains one star. It isn't a strong improvement on its own, but if you make it work, it could be worth investing into. Just remember to make the most of it if you decide to grab it. Hunting Horn Heavy Weapon Unfortunately, Hunting Horn has little to no use with Clutch Claw Boost. Like Hammer, you can already force openings by smacking the monster in the face. To try and use a slinger to shoot at the monster instead of playing songs isn't worth it. Not to mention, your slinger button is used for echo attacks, one of your strongest moves, especially for elemental hunting horns. For this reason, hunting horn gets a zero star rating. Lance, heavy weapon. Since you can already tenderize in one hit, the need for slinger ammo is only really dependent on playstyle. If you like to use slinger burst for flinches, it could be really effective. Though, like hammer, Thorn pods are really the slinger ammo you want to be using for this method. Combine this with the claw counter's stun and tenderize potential and it can be rather effective, though this ultimately depends on the monster and your playstyle, making it somewhat weak depending on the situation. Still though, it has some use if you don't mind working with it. For this reason, Lance gains 1.5 stars. Those that enjoy the slinger burst will be happy to take advantage of it for Lance. For others, it is a very small improvement that can be fun to try though. <laughs> gun Lance, Light Weapon Now I'm confused how a lance with a gun is considered a light weapon, but it is the shell that hits. Since it is a light weapon, being able to tenderize in one swing is really useful. You also gain the slinger ammo from the tenderize, which allows a lot more use with the warm state blast. Now of course, this is only really useful if you intend on focusing less on shelling damage. Shell exclusive playstyles might not benefit from it unless some few melee hits are used. Even then, this only really affects one playstyle out of a few. As a result, Gunlands gets a 3 star rating. Even if you don't intend to use pokes in a shell focused build, you can't deny the potential it has. The less you need a clutch claw, the more fighting and guarding you can do. Switch Axe, Heavy Weapon Switch Axe has very few slinger burst mechanics, yet they are still very helpful when you put to good use. You can slinger burst while wild swing to disengage if you're in a dangerous spot. Not to mention you can slinger burst to reorient yourself while using the axe mode. 
While all of this is pretty solid, just like the lance, it depends on your playstyle. If you are primarily using the sword mode for file damage, the slinger mechanic might not see much use. Though as it is still a rather strong option to have, it gains 1.5 stars. Do remember that a 1 star rating doesn't mean it's terrible or you shouldn't use it. It mostly means that it requires a lot more to take advantage of the benefits. Sometimes it's how you use a skill that really makes it powerful. Charge Blade Heavy Weapon Charge Blade's needs for a Slinger ammo is very minor. The ability to Slinger Burst after a guard reaction only really works for the more effective Slinger ammo. You'd probably also be using the guard reaction to charge files or elements with discharge. As for the ability to Slinger Burst while Axe Swing, it only really works during Savage Axe playstyles. However, don't let it stop you from using the Clutch Claw boost if that's your playstyle. I will have to give it a 1 star in the end though as the use is very small. Insect Glaive Light Weapon Because of a lack of instant tenorizing options for Insect Glaive, Clutch Claw Boost is rather helpful here, especially when you take into account the ability to claw onto the monster while in the air, though it's due to this where Clutch Claw Boost becomes a quality of life improvement. As such, it is a 2.5 star rating, still close to 3 though depending on your playstyle. The main thing holding it back is just the many opportunities to Clutch Claw. Though if you, if you want to tenorize once and forget it, definitely snag it. Light Bow Gun Light Weapon Heavy Bow Gun Heavy Weapon Both bow guns get their own section here as they're mainly in a similar category. Light Bow Gun being able to instantly tenorize can help rather well with certain ammo types. Heavy Bow Gun getting Slinger ammo is... meh. Since neither of these weapons have any slinger-like mechanics, the use of Cliff Claw Boost only really benefits like Bowgun. Even then, this benefit is only really for multiplayer, a factor that isn't part of the ratings. The final nail in the coffin for Clutch Claw Boost and Bowguns is the main three ammo types have level 3 decos. Investing a level 3 deco into normal, pierce, or spread will help more with damage than Clutch Claw Boost. The instant tenorize feature would also not benefit the ticky or cluster focus builds. As such, Heavy Bowgun earns a 0 star rating, while Light Bowgun earns a 1 star rating. I will not deny that Clutch Claw Boost and Light Bowgun has use, especially for support gunners, but you don't want to sacrifice the damage of your ammo, usually a limited resource, on it. Don't let that stop you from trying it though with a strong team. Bow Light Weapon a light weapon with no instant tenorizing attack and a powerful slinger mechanic? You can already tell this weapon will work well with the clutch claw boost. Unlike the bow guns, the bow doesn't really need the functionality decorations. Since you take more damage from attacks, taking less risks from attempting to tenorize monster parts is helpful. This also allows you to take advantage of the newly tenorized part with more arrows or even thousand dragons. Though it might be tricky to work in clutch claw boost depending on your armor setup. If you have a spare level 3 decoration, definitely give it a try. It's for this reason and the strength of the instant tenorize that it gains 3 stars. A very useful benefit that provides more safety and less risk. Now that we covered all the weapons individually with the Clutch Claw Boost, I want to quickly go over a few special cases where the Clutch Claw Boost can be very effective. Rajang is a monster you don't want to Clutch Claw onto often as the concern of getting pinned is too risky. Reducing the amount of times you have to clutch call onto him is really useful to avoid the dreaded pin. Of course, this only applies to light weapons, but it is still helpful. Dragon Vein Awakening is a skill exclusive to Safi Jiva armor. While you attack with your weapon, you lose health, but gain a portion of that health lost when attacking. The problem is putting away your weapon resets the counter before you receive your health back. Clutch Claw Boost can help to remedy this by reducing the need to Clutch Claw multiple times for light weapons. This of course won't apply for Dual Blades Double Round Slash or Hammer's Claw Swing, attacks that keep your weapon out, but it's this that makes Clutch Claw Boost have some usage. Lastly, Multiplayer With the Coordinated Group being able to ensure parts of the monster are tenderized while providing solid slinger ammo is rather useful, though it would depend on your team's weapon loadout, would, um, who would need slinger ammo, etc. Overall, 
I think Clutch Call Boost has a lot of potential. Speedrunners and support players can take advantage of the added benefits for some weapons. However, it will ultimately depend on the playstyle you intend to go with. Because of this, I want to keep in mind that my opinion on the effectiveness is not set in stone. Heck, the skill isn't even out yet, so maybe something super awesome will ruin what I say. At least I hope this gave a bit of an idea what can be done around a skill of this caliber. If you like this form of content, feedback would be highly appreciated. I will be looking forward to analyzing the other decorations once the update drops. Until then, take care hunters and happy hunting.